What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel. My name is Joshua Daniel George and in this video I'm going to give you some tips on how to create Facebook ads that convert like crazy. No, I don't waste no time. So guys, welcome back to the video and as you can see the uh, layout is slightly different this time because I was actually in work mode. Uh, I've just finished a conversation with a client or a meeting with a client I should say and we were discussing you know, different types of um, ad copy and ad variables uh, that basically influence you know, getting results or not. And um, while I was on the call, on the meeting, I thought, you know what, this is actually a great topic for a YouTube video. So at the end of the meeting, I basically uh, put up you know, my uh, ring light, set up the camera, and I thought, you know what, let me just leave the layout as it is. You know, let me not just uh, spend too much time on setting every, everything up and just focus on the message which I'm wanting to give you guys. And that is, like I said, regarding Facebook ads. And one very important thing that I want to mention right off the bat and what uh, I mentioned to my client as well is that the best ad is a good product. And what I mean by that is we can run you know, the best ads in the world, the best performing ads uh, with the best copy. You know, we, we split test everything. We target the right audience. We use Facebook, CBO, Dynamic Creative, etc. But if on the back end, the advertisement uh, is not leading to a good product, then you know, it will still fail. It will not convert. So at the end of the day, it is very much based on the product that you're promoting. And we've noticed the same with our clients and with clients that we've worked with in the past. You know, we would set up a uh, basically our strategy. Um, so for those of you that don't know, we focus a lot on e-com stores. We get a lot of good results for e-com stores and e-com clients. So that is sort of our main uh, niche that we focus on. And we'll set up, you know, our, our whole a system and funnel where we drive traffic to the website. We retarget people that show interest, etc. We will set our sort of methodology, etc. We'll set that all up for our clients and we'll get you know great results for our clients but then we would set it up for a different client with a different product we will set up the exact same funnel the exact same uh, methodology the exact same strategy and we won't get the same results and that uh, will then basically be draw down to um, the fact that either their website just doesn't convert you know we've noticed that for example we work with a lot of shopify stores um, which we get great results for but then if we work with for example a WordPress store or uh, one of the clients that we actually turned away a few weeks back had a store that was completely built out of HTML so it did not use Shopify or anything like that and it just didn't convert it didn't have the same uh, loading speed as Shopify did it didn't have the same you know like, like little features etc that Shopify does and you know, the catalog didn't seamlessly integrate with Facebook etc and stuff like that will you know basically make or break um, the functionality and the performance of the store as a whole so if the store or in this case the product isn't actually a product that works or the store just doesn't convert then like I said there's no point in running ads to it because you know you're just wasting your money so that is my main tip you know before we actually get into this video is to make sure that the product that you're trying to promote is actually of a decent enough quality and that there is a market of buyers for it so with that said um, on the whole Facebook ads you know do work which is another very uh, big misconception you know we've like I said you know I've been on my first year of sales calls and we've we've always had the objection um, or we've you know, we've gotten the objection a lot in the past that is Facebook ads don't work we've tried it in the past but it didn't work for us and guys Facebook ads do work okay you know it's proven it works but you just need to do it right you know if you're setting up if you're boosting a post or if you're setting up a uh, campaign with the object objective to get a certain amount of reach then you, because you're not optimizing for conversion, then obviously, you know, you're not going to get the conversion because that is not what you've told Facebook to do, okay? Which is also my second tip. Always optimize for what you want the campaign to do and which more often than not will be to get sales or leads. Um, for e-com, obviously sales. So then always optimize for conversions and then always optimize for purchase if that is what you want. And yes, you know, there are loads of... Um, questions about okay but what happens what happens if we haven't got any uh, pixel data for the purchase should I optimize for add to cart etc the way Facebook is going now and the way the algorithm is going and the way Facebook's AI is learning we can just optimize for purchase with a conversion campaign right off the bat okay you do not need to optimize review content first and build your way up we don't need the pixel to gather data or anything like, like that you know all that 
was basically the way it was two years ago, okay? The way it is now, so 2020, you know, Q4 2020, at the time of recording this, we can optimize for purchase right off the bat. And then another thing I wanna mention, I don't know what tip we're up to, is this tip number three, I think it is. Uh, tip number three is that people do not buy a product, they buy either an emotion, a transformation, or an experience, okay? And you just need to think, for example, the iPhone 12, which has recently come out, are people really buying the iPhone 12 because they want to make phone calls? No, they want it for the emotion, the status that it brings of having the latest iPhone um, or the transformation, you know, the fact that with this new iPhone, they're able to access new features. You know, they have the best camera um, that I think, you know, I think at the moment it is the best camera for smartphones. If I'm not, leave a comment. If I'm mist you know, mistaken, leave a comment down below. Um, but like I said, you know, the transformation, the emotion that is attached to it, or the experience of having the latest iPhone, for example, um, you know, that is why people buy it. They do not buy it for the features and the product and the benefits, they buy it for the status. So for example, if you want, uh, for example, you know, it's basically almost winter now, um, especially in the Netherlands, it is getting colder, and then, you know, you need to buy a winter coat. What do you, go, what do, you do? Do you go for a regular Zara or an H&M coat, or do you buy a Montclair or a Canada Goose coat? Still, you know, it basically does the same thing. It warms you up during the winter, but the, the status that you get from having that kind of the goose coat, from having that Montclair coat, is obviously much higher than if you're just walking around in a Zara jacket or a Zara coat. And more often than not, these are basically made in the same factory, in the same country, but one has a logo and one doesn't. So you need to basically take that into consideration when you're writing the copy for your ads as well and when you're making the advertisements as well because these things are very very important you know what emotion does the ad evoke what emotion or transformation does the product or service you know give to the customers with that said the variables that you need to play around with on the ad side of things are obviously the copy so you know what text are you going to give your advertisements to get people onto the next step of the flow, which is basically to get them onto the website. Uh, the creative, which is the image. So what image can you get um, or basically you know, add to the advertisement to get people to stop scrolling because people are not going onto Facebook to buy anything, okay? They're not gonna think to themselves, oh, you know what, I've got a few hours to spare. Let me scroll on Facebook and look at advertisements. So what you need to do is create advertisements that draw attention, that stops people scrolling. Um, I read an article the other day about someone that uses the color yellow in their advertisements creatives because it's a color that you do not see on Facebook often. Facebook obviously, you know, is different shades of blue and white and gray, or if you've got it in dark mode, it's, you know, um, charcoal. But the color yellow is not something that you see on Facebook often. So what this marketer did, he actually used a lot of yellow in his advertisements, in his creatives, and he noticed that his outbound CTR actually increased. So like I said, variables to keep into, you know, basically take into consideration are the copy and the image. And then lastly, um, or thirdly, I should say, is also the audience. Again, you can have the best advertisements in the world, the best headline in the world, but if you're targeting people that are generally not interested in what you have to offer, then again, it will fail. Then a few little tips from me when it comes to advertising for e-com stores at the top of the funnel. So cold traffic that you're driving to the website. What I like to do is just have an image and something that is very snappy and to the point that draws attention and gets people to click on the advertisements. The order in which people see advertisements or consume advertisements are image first, headline second, and then you've basically got the, uh, the, the smaller headline, uh, which I think is called a description, third, and then lastly, fourth, um, the button. So the limb or, or the shop now button, basically. So with that in mind, what we need to do is we have the image that stops people from scrolling, captures the attention, the headline um, is basically you know, what gets people to click on the advertisement. The description should be something that um, basically complements the headline, you know, basically uh, mentions some kind of discount agency scarcity, which I'll get into in just a second. And then obviously the button should be either learn more or shop now based on what it is that you're trying to achieve. So for the top of funnel, I like to keep it short and concise uh, just to get people on the website as soon as possible. Then for the middle of funnel, so people that we uh, are lukewarm, you know, we retarget website visitors, we retarget people that have engaged on Facebook, we retarget people that have engaged on Instagram, we retarget people that are on the email list, for example, we show testimonials. Testimonials and social proof are great ways of increasing 
the conversion rate on advertisements because social proof speaks for itself, right? If something is recommended by others, then we automatically believe it to be more true or better than it actually is. So social proof, especially if these people have already heard of the store, can get people um, from just basically, you know, browsing to people actually being committed to making a purchase or, you know, doing whatever it is that you want them to do on the store. So top of funnel, snappy, short, concise, middle of funnel, testimonials, social proof to basically, you know, get people that um, have already been on the site, have already experienced what it looks like to come back and make a purchase or a conversion. Then for the bottom of the funnel, which is basically people that we've retargeted that have shown interest either by adding to cart, maybe already doing the initiate checkout process, we retarget one last time with scarcity and agency. So we mentioned that there's only a few products left, um, that it's only while stocks last, you know, we, a discount code for the first so many people. And then of course, agency is uh, like I said, you know, make sure that you do this because this discount code is only valid for 24 hours or 72 hours. So make sure that people feel like, okay, this offer is not on the table forever, agency and scarcity. And then last but most certainly not least is the age old question, should you add a link in the headline? So what you'll often see with e-com stores is that yes, you know, the destination URL of the advertisements will direct them to the website, but they will also add the link in you know, the copy of the text as well. Should you do this, yes or no? And in my opinion, it depends on the, the basically the store. If it's a high ticket store with something that, you know, not everyone that is on Facebook will be qualified enough to make the purchase, then I would leave it out. If you want to lower the barrier to entry for people to get onto the store and you know that, because it's an impulse purchase, because it's something that, you know, the average Joe can purchase or the average Joe will purchase, then yes, by all means, add the link, test it, you know, always test, A-B test these things to see what works and what doesn't. But for the lower ticket items, I will add a link in the description. Um, and then for the high ticket items, the items that only more qualified individuals uh, can purchase or will purchase, then I leave that out and only have the destination URL as uh, basically you know, the call to action button to get those people onto the website. So I hope this makes sense. Hope you guys found value out of this. If you did, please leave a comment down below. I put up a poll on Facebook the other day asking you guys, you know, what do you wanna see from this channel? What is the, the direction that you guys want this channel to go to? I've been doing a lot of social media marketing related videos, especially with regards to outreach. Um, but there's so much more to online entrepreneurship, right? You know, there's mindset, there's productivity, there's personal branding, you know, there's even the lifestyle aspect of it. You know, do you guys find it interesting of me doing vlogs a day in the life, etc.? Personally, I find it quite boring to uh, watch day in the life videos, especially of those, because obviously, you know, there's a lot of people out there that try and make it more extravagant than there is. But my day to day, in my opinion, is pretty boring. You know, it's me just sitting at this desk, um, you know, having meetings and setting up ads. You know, but for, for you guys, you know, that might be really interesting. I know that my vlogs do perform relatively well when I look at the, the view counts and, you know, the, the like rate, etc. But what is it that you guys want to see from this channel? The poll on Facebook mentioned that Facebook ads and media buying is something that is in high demand and you guys would like to see more of as well. Um, is that opinion the same for my YouTube viewers? Let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see from this channel next. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already and I'll see you guys in the next video.